Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on vectors. In particular, these are a basic introduction to vectors where no uh, prior knowledge of vectors is assumed. Now in this pr presentation I'm going to show you how to calculate the length or the magnitude of a vector and I'm also going to show you how to calculate the direction or the angle associated with a vector and we'll do an example. Now just before we get down to that let's briefly review what we've done so far. So let me share my screen with you and uh, we'll get underway. Okay, so in previous videos I talked about what a vector is, and a vector, geometrically speaking, is just a quantity with a magnitude or length and a direction. And it can be geometric, geometrically represented by a directed line segment with a head and a tail. Now, uh, we can also write vectors in this so-called column form. Here I'm just working in the xy plane. And every vector in the uh, xy plane can be decomposed into basically um, these special i and j vectors. The i vector um, is horizontal and points to the right and has uh, length 1. The j vector points straight up and also has length 1. And these two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so I can write a vector in terms of the i's and j's or as this column. Okay, so Let's get on to today's presentation. The first question is, how big is a vector? So what I'm going to do is introduce a way of measuring the size of a vector known as the length or the magnitude. All right. So suppose I have a vector. Here I've written some vector in the xy plane, A, here's its column form and here's its i plus j form. We define the length of, or magnitude of A by these, um, uh, these two sort of uh, vertical lines around the vector and it's defined as just you square these uh, components, add them together and you take the square root. So geometrically, what's going on here? Well, let me draw in a vector and then we'll see what we can determine. Okay, suppose I've got a vector here. Now, I've only drawn two, two sort of arrows here because I want to decompose this into two of the basis i and j vectors. So here is the vector a. All right, now I know from previous classes and previous uh, um, videos that I can decompose this vector into these basis vectors. Okay, so this vector here would be a, oh, a1 i, okay? And this vector here would be a to j. And by the triangle or parallelogram law of addition, this plus this gives this, the vector a. Now notice that we have a right angled triangle here, okay? Because the i vectors and the j vectors are perpendicular or normal to each other. So what this means is we can, um, we can use Pythagoras to measure the length of this hypotenuse. Oops. Okay, well, we know that the length of this side squared equals the length of this side squared plus the length of this side squared. Okay, so if I use my special um, uh, magnitude notation up here, then it's just the length of this side squared plus the length of this side squared. Okay. 
oops, sorry, it's a sub one. Okay, now what is the length of the i and the j vectors? Well, they're just length one. Okay, so this here is basically just the square of a1 plus the square of a2. So if I take the square root of both sides, I'll get what's up here. Okay, now this is not the only way to measure the length or the magnitude of a vector, but this is the one we're going to be um, consistently using and the one that's probably the easiest to um, work out just using Pythagoras' theorem. Okay. All right, so that's uh, how we introduce size or how big, or answer the question, how big is a vector? And I'll do a, um, an example in a minute. The other important um, thing we're going to look at is the direction or the angle of a vector. What is the angle or the direction of a vector? Okay, and we're going to define this angle theta to be the angle that the vector A makes with the positive x-axis in the xy plane. Okay, and we can just use trig to come up with the following. Suppose we have a vector, then the angle theta between the vector and the positive x-axis is given by the following. Well, we just um, to do that, all you need to do is use a little bit of trig. So let me show you how that's done. So let's draw in some axes here. Now you don't have to draw, I mean the vector could be say up here or down here. I'm going to draw it so the tail point is at the origin. Now remember I can always move a vector around provided I don't change its length or its direction. Okay, so I can always take a vector and move it down here so that the tail points at the origin. Okay, so again it just comes down to um, decomposing the vector A into its I and J uh, parts. So this distance, uh, this distance here will be, I guess in this picture, will be A1. Up here we have A2. And so we have something like this little right angle triangle again. Okay, now the angle is this angle down here. This is our theta. Okay, and we take the anti-clockwise direction as a positive direction. So is it, if we rotate the vector this way, theta increases from zero um, uh, upwards. Okay, so if we have our right angle triangle now, what we can do is just use basic trig to um, come up with this angle. So we know the length of this is just this, and I know that it's given by this by Pythagoras in the previous slide. And so what I can do is use trig, let's say, um, uh, let's use tan, we know that tan theta equals the opposite side over the adjacent. And so here the opposite is A2 and the adjacent is A1. Oh, tan, sorry, I left off the theta. Tan theta equals that. Okay, so this is where this comes from. And again, the um, you can use just trig to come up with the cosine and the sines involved and these expressions here. 
Okay, so let's do an example and see how, how it all works. Now, in this particular picture, you've got um, uh, the vector lying in, I guess, the first quadrant. What happens if the vector lies in the second quadrant or the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant? We well, need to be a little bit more careful there, and sometimes it's easier to draw the vector and calculate this angle or this angle or this angle to the x-axis, and then you know look at um, t you know take that away from say pi or something like that. Okay, but let's just do a simple example and see how this is all done. Okay, we're asked to calculate the length and the angle of the following vector. Okay, now, you don't have to do this all the time, but um, I find it, it, it's, it's a good idea to actually sketch the vector and to actually see where it lies and some of its properties. Okay, so if I mark about root three on there, Mark one on there. Now, if I connect with our red vector here. This then is the vector A. Okay. So the question is, what is its length and what is the angle in here? Okay. Well, let's just do it by. Um, let's, I mean, you could you could work out um, uh, geometrically, but let's just do it using the formulas that we've seen today. Okay. So in this case, a one would be root three. A two would be one. Oops, sorry. Let me start that again. So it's root three, all squared, plus one squared. Okay, so root three squared is three, one squared is one, three plus one is four, which of course the square root of is two. So the length of A is two. Now, how do we work out the angle theta? Well, it's just the following. Now, some of you may know that for um, for this uh, th this equation can be solved for theta equals uh, pi on three. What happens if you don't know that or you can't remember it? Well, there are only really uh, two triangles you need to know in uh, trigonometry, right? So one is is the following triangle, where you have something like this. This isn't um, drawn to scale, by the way. Okay, you have one, root three, and two. And the angle down here is pi on 3. The angle up here is pi on 6. Now, how did I come up with that? Well, what you do is you start... Oh, sorry, I've drawn that, I've drawn that incorrectly. That should be 1, and that should be root 3. Okay, apologies. How did I draw that? Well, I started with an equilateral triangle where all the sides have length 2. Okay, let me just fix up the document camera. Okay, so let me get back to this. I started with an equilateral triangle of sides 2 and I drew a vertical line that split the triangle in 2. Okay, that half the angle up here, all the angles would have originally been pi on three, half half the side down here from two down to one, and the the side here would be 
um, root 3. Okay, so let's look at this then and see if we can determine what theta should be. Okay, so tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, that's 1 over root 3. Okay, so that equals opposite over adjacent, that gives me 1 over root 3. So hence, theta equals pi on 6. I may have said pi on 3 before, sorry about that. So theta equals pi on 6. Alright, so that's it. Now, I said there was two triangles you need to know. The other triangle is just the one where the angles are um, uh, pi on 4, pi on 4, and uh, pi on 2, and you have a root 2 as the hypotenuse, and the other two sides are 1. Okay, so that is a basic example showing you how to calculate the length and the angle of a vector. All right, so let's look at the property, some properties of the length or the magnitude. Okay, so if I have two vectors A and B, here are some basic properties of the length or the magnitude. Firstly, the length is always non-negative. Okay, you can't have a negative length. And the length is zero if and only if A is the zero vector. Now by this if, I mean if and only if. So that means if the length's zero, then the vector A is the zero vector. And if A is the zero vector, then the length is zero. Now this inequality here is called the triangle inequality. And it says, that the length of the longest side of a triangle is always less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. Okay, so let me write that down for you. So the triangle inequality says that the length of the longest side of a triangle is always less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. Okay. And lastly, if I have a vector and I multiply it by a number, say 2, and I want to take the uh, um, look at the magnitude or the uh, length of that, then really it's just the product of that um, scalar, the absolute value of that scalar, times the length of the vector. Okay, so if this was 2a, I would just basically take 2, the absolute value of 2 is 2, and just multiply by the length of the vector a. Okay, well, that's a, a pretty introductory um, presentation on length and magnitude, how big are vectors, and what is their direction. I hope you found it useful. In other videos, we'll be moving forward into vectors, but still in quite an introductory way. So if you have any comments, any questions, you can post them in the comment section below. And I look forward to your company again for the next instalment in this basic introduction to vectors. I hope you can join me for the next instalment.